What's up guys, we got a dope video for today. We're gonna do a full Tinder law breakdown all the way from the opener to the part where the girl says, oh daddy, I had so much fun and everything in between. And this one's gonna be very good because there's gonna be a lot of lessons like how to text a bratty girl, how to get invited over her place, how to keep frame, how to pass shit tests and how to set the whole thing up and make everything happen with somewhat minimal texting. I think this is gonna be a really good one, so enjoy. Alright, so this interaction was sent to us by one of our Mastermind members who's got a really solid text game, so you're going to see a lot of good gems in here. And so he had put quote unquote, Brat Tamer in his bio, which as a side note is why it's important to have a strong hook in your bio. So what you're not going to do in a bio is take a girl who's not attracted and make her attracted. That's going to be done by her photo. She's either going to find you attractive or not. The problem is there's hundreds of other attractive guys, right, who have solid photos. But when you have a strong hook in your bio, that's going to get her to engage with you over all the other guys who are equally or better looking. So that's why in my bio I also have a lot of strong hooks. So anyway, so she opens him with Define Brat Tamer. Again, so she probably finds him attractive but she finds all the hundreds of other guys attractive but he's got a strong hook in there and that made her curious and so he says say please so he's playing into the role if she's asking about oh what do you mean by brat tamer chances are she's a brat she says like wow i got a response please and this is interesting i don't think this was deliberate he just i guess didn't check his tinder profile and then she double texts no question mark again you can see that the bio had hooked her and that's a very good starting point he says to keep it simple you get out of line too bratty i tame you everyone is happy again this is a very good response so he's not justifying himself like well let me tell you you know brad tamer really means blah 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 he just keeps it simple and straightforward which is exactly what you want to do with bratty girls she says sounds like something that would make me happy i guess i i was more interested in how you would tame me that's a very common question you're going to get from brats pulling your hair over the root bending you over and slapping that ass so hard it leaves handprints All right so this is a very good strong dominant message she says would you wrap your hand around my neck so as you're slapping my ass i like that a lot I want to meet you, right? So she had that strong interest off the bat, but now she's saying, I want to meet you. This is off to a very good sign. He says, choking you, squeezing your throat firmly while turning you into a whimpering, moaning mess for me. Uh, what nights are you free or are you feeling spontaneous? So here he's trying to see if he can get her that night. She says, you're so sure you can do that. I'm free Thursday, Friday night. I like a confident guy, by the way. And this is the girl, uh, Brad, Braddy chicks and just some chicks in general are going to do that. They're going to be like, are you sure? Right? And they're seeing if you're going to be congruent to your friend. Or going to be like, well, you know, you never know, blah, 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 blah. We're going to be like, fuck yeah. Of course, I got this. That's the vibe you want to portray. And then again, she double texts like 30 minutes later. Also pretty flexible during the work week during the day. He says, flexibility is good. You'll need it. Want to have you straddled wide open, begging and moaning while I tease your dripping pussy lips with just the tip. So again, he's sexting her, right? But he's he's not going overboard. He's not writing essays. He's keeping it short and succinct. She, she says, you talk a really good game. So it makes you so sure that I'll even address for you. So again, this is a sign of a Brad. They always challenge you, right? They want to see if your frame is going to crumble and actually that's what's going to happen with most guys like most guys have really weak frames and whenever they get challenged by a bratty chick or just a chick in general their frame crumbles and they start getting defensive or they start justifying themselves and the minute you start doing that the minute you lose the quote-unquote brat so she says if you don't enjoy multiple oral orgasms then you probably shouldn't and she says who wouldn't want that but i want you to stop right before I orgasm and make me beg for you to keep it tell me your name please he says, good girls get rewarded. And then he says his name, but I'll accept sir, master, or daddy when appropriate. She says, um, I'm fine with any of those. Depends what kind of mood I'm in. Let me know if when you want to meet. House Thursday, say around 12 p.m. So I, don't, I guess just because of his work schedule, he wanted to meet during the day. Uh, me personally, I prefer meeting at nighttime. So I always do meetings around 8 or 9 p.m. Uh, but this is, again, a matter of personal preference. I would just say the only thing is like uh, when you're like, especially because this chick has a job when you're saying Thursday around 12 p.m., like chances are she's going to be at work. But then she did say that she has flexibility during the day. So that makes it okay. But if she didn't say that, then that would be a bad time to meet. Uh, she says, yeah, that works where, and then <laughs> it's so funny because she, she's like actually chasing really hard, right? Because he didn't, uh, you know, he just forgot to respond. I'd suggest somewhere, but you seem to like having control. Uh, he, he says, uh, you have coconut oil at your place. So he's going straight to her house. Now, again, I want to mention this. I always 
recommend inviting girls to your place rather than trying to invite her, yourself to her place, right? Because a lot of chicks are gonna have more objections about that. They're gonna be like, ooh, he's gonna know my address. What if it doesn't go well, right? So chicks are usually more paranoid about that. There's a small minority of girls who do prefer uh, having the guy come to their place instead of going to, you know, the guy's place, but most girls prefer going to the guy's place. However, you know, if you don't have any logistics, which seems to be like 50% of the people who are in the comments, right? Like just, they're like, oh, you know, I'm living with my parents or whatever. I live like some middle of nowhere. So in those situations, it is good to know how to invite yourself to the girl's place. And the one big thing that I always say with that is if you're trying to invite yourself directly to the girl's place, you need to have a sexual premise. So if you're just being very romantic or platonic over text and then you're like hey is your place an option that's going to be a no-go because it's going to be zero to a hundred and the girl's going to be like what the fuck why are you trying to invite yourself to my place so if you're going to do that you need to have an underlying sexual premise like he has here hey if you guys are enjoying the content on this channel then make sure you hit the like button hit subscribe and click that bell for notification uh, so he sa she says, I don't, but I can get it if you wanted. Good girl, have some ready for early Thursday afternoon and dress in a loose skirt. So he's very much playing into the whole like, hey, listen, uh, you're gonna be my little submissive, you know, uh, quote unquote slut, right? And I'm gonna dominate you. And again, a lot of chicks are very much into that sexually. Like they may not want that in other areas of their life, but sexually that idea turns them on. And usually the thing about bratty girls, right? A bratty chick is a form of a submissive girl, but the difference between, I guess, like a standard submissive girl and a bratty chick is the bratty chick is only submissive to a true alpha versus a submissive chick would just be submissive to anyone who's more dominant than her, which is gonna be most of the male population, right? But the bratty chick, she doesn't wanna be submissive to most guys. She only wants to be submissive to a true alpha dom. And she's gonna shit test every single guy to see if he actually falls into that category. And 99% of guys are gonna screen themselves out because again, they're gonna get bothered, they're gonna start justifying, you know, they're gonna be a little quote unquote soft, and the girl's gonna be like, ooh, he's not a true alpha dom, fuck him next, right? And they're gonna just roll all over guys like that. So he's very much keeping his frame, which is good. He, she says, yes sir, but can we meet a little early, like 11, my daughter gets home early in Thursdays. So this is like a hot single mom. And yeah, for some reason in the, you know, Red Pill community, there's a big stigma against like, oh, single moms, blah, blah, blah. There's some fucking hot ass MILFs out there. I live in Miami and there's so many. Like, yeah, dating a single mom might be a little challenging, but hooking up with a single mom, who gives a shit if she has kids? Like to me, that's always been a really dumb argument. He says, no worries, I'll be there earlier than between 10 and 11, won't keep you waiting too long. Uh, so this is pretty good. And then I guess she uh, just hearts his message. So he waits two days and he follows up with, should be your number so we can trade details. So this is very important, right? So when you are you know, setting up plans with a girl, you do wanna move things over to text once the plans have been set. Because the texting, like you having her number creates an additional, let's just say safety net, right? It's harder for her to disappear, even though like logically it's still pretty easy. All she has to do is drop, you know, block your number. It still gives you an extra layer of investment right so she's less likely to disappear on you because there's more investment if you're texting her than if you're just on the app right so it's very good to move things over text not instagram not snapchat by text or whatsapp she says hey she drops a number can you text me later on please ready to grab dinner and drinks it's my birthday today so then he just texts her with uh, like a cool selfie saying happy birthday and we're obviously gonna we block this out but this is a solid selfie like he looks good in it uh it's not you know feminine his body language is good so this is really good and sometimes it is good good to send a picture of you, but it has to be a good picture. If you send a shitty picture, you can have the best interaction ever. One shitty picture, and I've seen this time and time again, can completely derail the interaction and the vibe, and the girl just disappears. So uh, you shouldn't just be taking random selfies on the fly. You should have a few really good selfies already saved to your phone, pictures that you've already tested and have sent to multiple girls for feedback that you can reuse. And that's per something personally I do. So uh, she says, thank you. Are we still meeting tomorrow? Yes, you still good for 10. I am. Where you located and she gives a general area. He says, I'm going to need an address, yes, silly goose. And she drops the address. Now, also, when you're meeting at the girl's house, having the address is essential because once, typically I found that once the girl gives you the address, at that point, she's really not going to flake. I mean, it could still happen, but the chance of you getting flaked on just drops dramatically, right? Before you have the address, you know, there's still a good likelihood of flaking her getting cold feet. But once you have the address, that's minimal. And you want to get the address, you know, before the date, like, you know, a day beforehand, right? So you have that while the investment is high, while she's really interested, you get the address. That's a form of a commitment. So that's an additional extra layer of investment. So we got the number, 
number, then we got the address. That's like a lot of investment right there, right? Uh, so he says, good girl, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning then. So again, he's constantly rewarding her, right? When she does something that he likes, like dropping the address, he says, good girl, right? So rewarding good behavior is something that brats really, really enjoy, right? Because otherwise, you're gonna get bad behavior. She, sa she says, I'm looking forward to seeing you too. Uh, he, then she says, you're still coming. Yep, leaving soon. Okay, good, on my way. Text me when you get here, here. So there's just logistics. And then afterwards, he sends her a fire emoji. She says, agree, I wanna do that again, please. We will for sure. And then she says, good, because I feel like I could have done a little better and need to do a better job of taking that. It's so big. Okay, I'm gonna go shoot up now, bye. So I guess it's like a little inside joke that they had. And uh, I'm imagining something better than that needle, right? So he's just, I guess they're fucking around here. But you can see that, again, this follows all the principles of good text game. Like he recognized that she's a brat and a chick who's a brat, you know, you're gonna text her a bit differently than let's just say a chick, you know, who's whatever, just your average girl who you have a romantic premise with, right? So the interaction here is very sexual, right? But that's a good thing because with a chick like this, if you're gonna be platonic or you're gonna be, you know, romantic, she's gonna get bored as fast. Any attractive girl, Girl has myriads of options, but there's not going to be that many guys who can pick up on her archetype, text her appropriately, pass all her shit tests, and set everything up in a smooth, precise way and build investment to hedge their bets against flaking. That's what he did really well, which is why he got, you know, some hot milf ass. All right, hopefully, you guys found this video valuable and shows that you're a brat tamer by smashing that like button, taming that subscribe button, and clicking the bell for notification. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.